There are different ways that libraries get funding to keep their doors open. They can have a line in the village or town budget, but that's always subject to political shifts and ebbs and flows in economic fortunes. Libraries can also be incorporated into a school district's budget, which tends to be more stable, and most school budgets pass. One North Country town's library is trying to go from one to the other, but it's not easy to explain to residents who don't want to see another item in their tax bill. That's today's story of the day. Support for Story of the Day comes from Pearsall Wealth Management at UBS Wealth Management USA, subsidiary UBS AG, member FINRA SIPC, 1 Broad Street, Glens Falls. Hey, I'm David Summerstein. It's Monday, May 20th. First up, last week, Governor Kathy Hochul was in Rome for Pope Francis's three-day climate change summit. As Amy Feierisel reports, she spoke extensively about New York's environmental policy. Last week, hundreds of world leaders and scientists met in the Vatican City. They were there to talk about climate change and climate change resilience, how humanity can adapt and change to survive in our shifting environment. Governor Kathy Hochul was there and spoke about the way climate change has battered New York State since she took office. I had two hurricanes my first week on the job, more than Florida had that year. Tornadoes, 1,000-year flooding event. Our lakes and streams upstate, where people have drowned, flooded in their homes. And I'm only on the job two years. So think about the scale of those cataclysmic events, of what it has done to our communities. Hochul said that the $4.2 billion Environmental Bond Act that voters passed in 2022 was just the beginning of New York's climate action. At the forum, Governor Hochul announced another $300 million for climate change resiliency initiatives. Two-thirds of the funding is for water quality improvement projects that address flood resiliency or protect a drinking source. Pope Francis said at the forum that the destruction of the environment is, quote, an offense to God. He asked political leaders whether they were working towards a culture of life or for a culture of death. To listen to the words of the Pope, who joined our responsibility to Earth, but also taking care of the poor. They are one and the same. And we have people in our own state, children growing up in areas where asthma rates are too high. Hochul said that disadvantaged communities are more likely to suffer from climate change impacts and need to be a focus. Disadvantaged communities should not be any worse environmentally than any other affluent community because that is an injustice. That is an injustice. Pope Francis also spoke about how up to 3.5 billion people might be displaced from their homes due to climate change. And Governor Hochul acknowledged that many climate change refugees are finding their way to New York. She said that the state is a magnet for migrants looking for a better life and that climate change refugees deserve help in their home countries and when they come to the U.S. But those who are the climate refugees, local circumstances, environmental challenges that are driving people from their homes because they can no longer sustain themselves in the agricultural jobs that were once there for them, that's not their fault. We have to help them. Hochul has been scrutinized for her handling of the influx of migrants in the state over the last two years, with many Republican lawmakers calling on Hochul to take harsher measures. Several North Country counties, including St. Lawrence, Warren, Franklin, and Herkimer, have taken preemptive measures to block migrants from coming to their counties. But Hochul said at the conference that she is optimistic about the future and New York's climate goals. She said current leaders and residents have a moral obligation to future New Yorkers to make change now. Amy Feierisel, North Country Public Radio. Former Vermont Governor Howard Dean says he won't run for his old office this fall after all. The 75-year-old Democrat made the announcement this morning in Waterbury, putting weeks of speculation about a potential comeback to bed. Dean said he would have had to mount a negative campaign to make up the difference in the polls, and he didn't want to do that. Dean's decision comes a few days after popular Republican Governor Phil Scott confirmed that he will seek a fifth two-year term. Dean ran for president in 2004 after a dozen years as governor. Former Burlington Mayor Myra Weinberger is also reportedly considering a campaign as a Democrat. The 
The Messina Public Library in northern St. Lawrence County has been struggling with budget cuts the last few years. Its supporters are seeking a more stable budget by switching from being funded by the town to the larger Messina School District. A vote on the change is set for tomorrow. Monica Sandreski has more. Right now, the Messina Public Library is a municipal library. That means it's funded through taxes from folks in town, and the town board sets the budget. But in the last few years, the board has cut the budget by about 20 percent. Sue Baller is the town supervisor and says it's the reality of a former company town that's trying to survive. With fewer industries in town, it's, it's, been, it's been tight the last few years, and especially after um, the previous town board um, sold the hospital and they left us with $5 million of hospital debt. That has not helped either. Still, those budget cuts have had a real impact on services for library goers, according to advocates of the Messina Library. Elaine Dunn is the former library director and now advocates with the Friends of the Messina Public Library. They can't afford to lose any more money. They've lost employees. They have lost hours and money that they can spend on the book budget and the audio and ebook budget. Dunn worries the cuts will continue if they don't become a school district library. That means that taxpayers in the larger school district, not just the town, would fund the library. So it's going to broaden our our tax base. It's going to broaden where we receive our money from, and it's going to give the library a stable budget. It's also a move the state education department says is good for communities because it increases the library's accountability for how they spend their money. Several North Country libraries are funded like this, including Chazy, Crown Point, Lake Placid, Malone, Potsdam, and Tupper Lake. The change from Messina's library would mean that homeowners in Louisville, Norfolk, and Brazier, who are in the Messina School District, would join Messina town residents in paying taxes for the library. They'd pay about 84 cents per thousand dollars of the value of their property. So if your house is assessed at $100,000, you'd pay $84 a year. Uh, you know, basically, uh, I haven't had too many people that are supporting that. Mark Peets is the town supervisor in Brazier. He says voters shot down a similar proposal back in 2020. Plus, Pete says his town has its own small part-time library right on Route 11C. So does Norfolk. I mean, I, I'm not against libraries. I mean, I I had a grew up in Messina when I was a kid, and I had a Messina public card, and I went there quite a few times. Uh, but, you know, I think things have changed a little bit. Um, basically, the facts, it's like how many people are actually using a library? You know, it's, it's very difficult. Like I said, I'm not against it, but it's... Uh, you know, I may see more people come into the town hall than, than to actually go to the library. About 8,600 people are Messina library card holders, and a third of them live outside of town lines. Former library director Elaine Dunnigan. You may not use the library, but many of your neighbors use the library. We have all kinds of programming here, particularly for older adults. Like free classes on how to manage chronic illnesses and diabetes. Plus, there are jerry-fit exercise classes, jazz concerts, and talks from visiting authors. Libraries aren't just about books, Dunn says. They're about people. The library is the living room of the community. And all are welcome, regardless of social status, uh, regardless of orientation, uh, regardless of working, unemployed. And, and that's the point of a library, is it's a welcoming, non-judgmental place. And we need them desperately in our communities more than ever. Residents of the school district can vote tomorrow at the Messina Community Center on Beach Street. Polls are open from noon until 8 o'clock. That's Monica Sandresky reporting. We have more news all the time on our website, ncpr.org. If you haven't subscribed to Story of the Day as a podcast yet, why the heck not? Here are the benefits. It's free. It shows up an hour earlier at four every weekday. It downloads automatically to your phone or laptop or whatever. And then it's there. So you can listen even when you're in a cell phone dead zone. Very handy for driving through the Adirondacks. Subscribe to the Story of the Day podcast in your podcast app of choice or Spotify, iHeartRadio, whatever. And if you listen that way already, you're awesome. Music today by Christopher Watts of Canton and Evan Veenstra of Gananoque, Ontario. I'm David Summerstein, North Country Public Radio.